Hey guys, what's happening? Matt Cichlid Dojo back for another fish room update, our monthly fish room update for uh, the month of uh, May. Um, I haven't been as active the last couple weeks posting. A uh, little busy. Uh, summer is usually uh, a busy period for me um, with my other hobbies and whatnot and, uh, and so I apologize there um, still uh, still very focused on the fish room and and uh, breeding and distributing fish just uh, uh, haven't been able to uh, record much video but there's definitely stuff that's new for this fish room update um, stuff that's available, stuff that people have asked for a while. Now uh, I have some, uh, I guess a little announcement on uh, species there. And uh, so hopefully uh, you, you loyal followers are, uh, are going to look forward to this one. But uh, we'll get right into it here. Uh, I always like to start in this corner here. Uh, for whatever reason, but uh, we'll go right back here to the uh, 150 gallon, which houses the Blue Texas. Uh, some fun stuff happening over here. The pair on the left is my favorite pair, as you guys have heard me say countless times. Uh, it's one of my favorite males I've kept uh, ever for the species, the Herictus carpentis. Um, still no uh, improvement on their spawning. I think they had a failed spawn not too long ago. Um, so not really sure what's going on with that. Um, the female here still doing good. Aggression wise, uh, couldn't ask for more. Breeding obviously slowed down. But for that very reason, I'm lucky to have a second breeding pair on the right side of the divider here, which we'll, uh, we'll go over and take a look at. And as you can see, see if we can get in there. You look, look at the bottom part of that pot. Uh, there's a pretty decent sized batch of fry. Um, I haven't really focused on it too much. If I had to say, uh, maybe in that 150 to 200 fry range. Um, and it's looking like I'm gonna probably pull them, get them up in a breeder box for at least uh, two to four weeks. And, uh, and I'll need those fry. Uh, I do have a couple batches, not very big batches, but uh, I think it's important that I pull these as the other pair has slowed down, but you can see the male on the other side. They're both, both pairs are doing really good. I just, uh, spawning wise, my favorite pair on the left uh, who I've, you know, gotten all the fry from them in the past. Uh, the left pair kind of slowed down with the breeding. But thankfully I've got this other pair and uh, we'll keep an eye on the pair on the left to see if they uh, pick back up and start doing these things properly again. But anyways, Blue Texas, the Carpentas are doing great and I have fry available. From them, I think they're. I think I'm calling them about three quarters of an inch, give or take. Let me know if you're interested. I'll show uh, their fry later on. And I do have some grow outs that I'm excited about, and they're growing really fast. We'll see those here later on in this update. Uh, down below the 150, uh, another five foot tank. We have uh, an Endopsis tetracanthus. Um, probably not going to get to see them very well. A little skittish with the garage door open, but these Cubans are growing really fast. Um, I have, there's like a handful in here that are probably over two inches. Um, they're hiding at the moment. Let's see if I can go catch them. There's one down there at the bottom. Uh, and the whole batch I'd say is an inch to two and a half inches. Um, maybe three to five of them are that two inches to two and a half inches uh, and a lot in between. So if you're interested in some Cuban cichlids, message me. I got plenty here. 
but uh, we'll go see in, uh, the parents here in a second if they're not too skittish to come out. But um, they're doing good, the Cuban batch here on the bottom. Uh, next, uh, the 120 gallon with the True Green Terrors, the Indino Car Stalsberg guy. Try to get in here because they can be a little skittish, especially with the garage door open. Uh, see if we can sneak up on them. Uh, no progress as far as breeding for these guys. And of course, while I'm taking video, they're, they're all gonna hide. But um, see one in the back there. Uh, no progress on breeding. But, uh, you know, I'm working on my backup plan. What I think I've mentioned before, I'm growing out some of their F1s. And uh, hopefully get some breeding pairs in the future. Uh, there's a couple of them coming out. Just an absolutely beautiful species. And there is the dominant male right there. They're doing well. Such a beautiful species. Can't say that enough. Uh, love keeping these guys. Not the easiest. There's a just really good eater. Uh, most of them aren't big eaters, but this one just uh, stands out. Uh, never skips a meal, you could see. Um, not the dominant fish in here. Uh, I would guess it's a male. I, I'm not positive. Um, the female, the breeding female, uh, well, the past breeding female, uh, she's, she's a lot more darker. So, uh, and uh, it looks like she's not gonna come out. But anyways, they're all doing good, the group. Moving on, down below. Uh, these are the Depi, Herictus Depi, the F1 Fry from my old wild caught pair. Uh, they're getting big. Um, you know, I'm listing them, I think, the ones that I'm getting rid of inch and a half, inch to inch and a half, but I think I'm gonna start getting rid of uh, some little bit bigger ones, maybe inch and a half to two inches. I am still ho hoping that the bigger ones, I can do like a group and grow them out in a top tank, but we're gonna see if I can, uh, if I can clear out a tank for them. Uh, but I'm holding on. But yeah, anyways, there, I do have a limited amount from inch to two inch that are available. So message me if you want some of those. Go check out some of my old video if you wanna see what these uh, guys can look at like at adults. Uh, I really miss my old pair. Um, I think they're, it's just a beautiful species. So message me facebook instagram or leave your email in the comments next 120 gallon another one up top so here's one of the changes and or announcement uh if you guys follow this is where i had some of my f1 real guys feste grow outs um i recently took out five of these guys i think they were they're in the three and a half to four and a half inch range I move them down to the bottom tank and they're available. So just only five of them right now. Uh, you know, I can kind of guess on sex, some of the spangles on the fins of the, the ones on the bottom, you know, uh, disappearing. I can kind of, you know, assume that probably female. Uh, I can do that, not gonna guarantee sex, but if you're interested, message me now. I know a lot of you guys have messaged on Bigger Fest Day. They're just incredibly slow growing. Uh, I don't blame you for wanting bigger ones. Um, message me quick. They should go pretty fast, but I'm down to my 10 on top that I'm gonna focus on growing out further um, to hopefully get a dominant male or female that I uh, switch with different blood that I have in this fish room as well. But you can see the progress growing, but uh, no pairing activity yet but they are in that range these guys are probably that four and a half five inch to maybe six inch range six and a half uh, there's a couple big big ones in here that i'm assuming are male then you can kind of see some females that one previously with the black blotch on the dorsal right there in the back um, and some of the spangles disappearing so fun stuff just needs to require some patience um, down below, and you're not going to really see much of the fish in here in the 60 gallon. Uh, this is where I had those old 
Nanoludia, uh, I think Crypto Heroes Nanoludia. Um, I threw those five feste that I'm that I'm uh, getting rid of down here with them temporarily, just to have them segregated. But I'm going to move those Nanoludia as well. There's, I believe, two bigger males and two females. They're not in the 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 best shape. They're, they've seen better days as far as their fins, but. Uh, the, the two males look, look pretty good, in, in, in my opinion, and uh, they have had one spawning attempt, uh, at least the pair on the right down there. Hard to see. Um, so I'm going to get rid of them as well. Message me if you're interested. Uh, I offered them back to my buddy. He was an interest in taking them back. So uh, I do need this tank to clear out. So... Uh, yeah, both bigger feste in here, three and a half to four and a half inches, as well as a group of four Nanoludia uh, are available. Message me. All right, next is a 75 gallon. I have my Paracromus motoguensis pair in here. A little on the skittish side, uh, we'll try to get in. You can see the male growing pretty, pretty well. Um, no spawning happening in here. I moved these guys in the 75 gallon tank um, and they're not divided. So we'll see what happens. The female, you know, they both can be aggressive towards each other, but I don't see much damage occurring. So uh, I haven't felt the need to divide them yet, but uh, we'll go see their first batch of fry that, um, yeah, I'm gonna announce uh, will be available very shortly here probably already um, and again these are from a different population Rio Motagua, Matagua uh, different from the Rio Blancos that I used to keep uh, excited to see how some of their fry turned out turn out hopefully hopefully I can uh, grow some out for myself see a little teeth on this guy and the females looking really good she's just getting redder by the day However, she is hiding right now back in one of those tubes. So anyways, the motors are doing good in the 75. Uh, I have to see if I can get some video of them later. Down below, um, on the left, these are some Panamensis. I do have bigger a bigger batch that are available, but uh, these guys are doing well down here. These guys are definitely above half inch. So. Uh, they will be available at some time but the other batch uh i think i have 30 to 40 left let me know if you're interested in panamensis guys one of my favorite species lately um middle tank these are blue texas or carpentis uh smaller batch not the ones that are available the ones that are available are a little bit bigger we'll see those in a second and as you can see the different uh color of the water i am treating this tank i have two fish from my uh my buddy um, one, I believe, is a male uh, F1 Feste off of that different bloodline, um, and I'm going to somehow incorporate him, hopefully. Uh, I believe it's a male. We'll see. Uh, I'll show later how tables seem to turn uh, late, you know, at a bigger size lately. Some that I thought were male now appear to be more female. Uh, getting really tricky with this population but anyways there's one here and, and in the back there's a uh, multifasciatus that's pretty decent size once I uh, heal them up here I'll be incorporating them somehow with the rest of the grouts so anyways three tens on the bottom that's what's going on next the 240 so my feste pair as you guys I if you guys follow the channel um, I used to have a smaller pot back there that used to breed in and then um, I started to get smaller and smaller batches and my assumption was that the male just got too big for the pot. Now I have one of these X large pots that I threw in here probably a month, month and a half ago to see if that they did any better with that and she is sitting on a batch of fry right now and from looking at them observing i think the batch is bigger uh we'll see um female's doing good she's guarding them right now and of course this male is just getting just getting pretty big in size he's doing really good couldn't be much happier colors aren't going to show off very well as uh 
garage door being open and, and they're a little skittish but the pair is doing great and we have another batch of fry it, it appears so i am going to in the next day or two go in and siphon them out again these are wild caught uh rio gaius feste pair and uh they're doing good uh up above have one of their last batches in that small pot, which was extremely small. Um, let's get in close here. You can see how, how they're doing really healthy little fry. Probably about 50 of them in here, I would guess. And they're still eating that baby brine shrimp. Doing good. I'll have to clear out one of those 10 gallons soon so I can upgrade them, give them a little more space. But for right now, they're doing good in this little breeder box. Um, on the other side, so I moved the mail out of here. I had that second, my backup mail, uh, Rio Gaius, and uh, there's still two females in here, wild caught females. I needed that mail for uh, a different reason, and we'll go take a look at that in a second there uh, in the 180 gallon. But uh, the two females in here without the mail, they're not as colored up. Uh, they're always fighting back there. You can see them through that pot. Um, I'm hanging on to them right now. I might need them for some uh, F1 males that I, I pull out. But yeah, coloration dropped dramatically once I pulled that male. Uh, they're not fighting over a male right now because there's none in here. And uh, we'll, you'll go see in a second here what I'm doing. But uh, Feste are doing great. I do have their fry available. Uh, I think I would say three quarters of an inch plus minus, but I know there's some in the inch range. We'll go take a look at them. They're on the bottom. Um, all swimming around. They look smaller than they are, but they're definitely a lot of them. Easily 30 of them plus 30 to 40 or three quarters of an inch or bigger. So they're available, guys. Let me know if you're interested in getting some of these F1. Um, up above the 100 gallon, these guys are really skittish. We'll try to get in here very slowly, but these are the F1 Andino Cara Stalsbergi, um, the true green tares that I'm growing out. They're uh, much better eaters than their parents, and that was kind of what I planned on. Uh, I've all, you know, since I started breeding these, maybe a year and a half, two years ago. I've always kind of, you know, wanted to grow some of these out. I've seen other people grow them out, and I uh, was really impressed by, uh, you know, the difference in, in, in them versus the wild caught parents. Um, even some have surpassed the size of the parents already, uh, not ones that I have, but other people do. And you can see how fat some of these guys are. They're just big time eaters. Um, some big boys look at that one back there um and we'll see how they do i have i believe 19 or 20 in here and uh i'm really excited about them i think i've only lost one i think it was due to aggression i'm not sure but um as soon as they get maybe half an inch to an inch bigger i'll i'll start thinking about some dithers and and uh allowing them to come out a little bit more get some video um, you see that big one right under the sponge filter uh, gotta be close to three inches so and I do have uh, fry available on these guys uh, one of the last batches uh, since my pair stopped spawning uh, I'm, I'm just labeling mine as an inch plus or minus uh, let me know if you're interested again these grow outs are for myself right now at some point down the line I'll have to have to move some of them but uh nowhere not anytime soon so but the one inch is one inchers in the other batch we'll go see they're available let me know and that's where these guys came out of basically so message me if you want some uh true green tears all right let's move around um i'm gonna bring my chair with me so to this side, obviously they're gonna be a little bit more skittish, but I do have my, uh, my Cubans in here. Try to get in close. Looks like the female might be close to a spawn. Uh, I see the male in there flaring up. 
actually no no fry in the pot yet but you can see the females pretty her belly's pretty full so I would guess there's a spawn coming soon and uh, not that I need it I do have two batches out right now but uh, they're doing good it's a good pair uh, really happy with them see a little more aggression on them um, and uh, something really cool well, I'll show it in a second after I'm done on the parents but um, I think we saw their fry earlier that were in that inch to two and a half inch range let me know if you're interested some Cubans uh, I pulled one of the biggest fry out maybe a month and a half month ago and I can never get a good video but he is just massive uh, he was just destroying the smaller ones in the batch and this guy eats like no other he's probably three and a half inches um, and you guys probably recall I didn't get that spawn that long ago this guy uh, I'm gonna really have to get some video once this guy comes out I have him divided in this tank just to hopefully um, you know once he gets starts getting a little more uh, confident and defensive maybe he'll start flaring up at the dad but I think this guy's gonna be something special I think it's a male we'll see you never know uh, but I'm excited about this guy so it's all skittish right now because the garage doors open but anyways let's move on um, down down below there's three 10 gallon tanks uh, on the left there's a small batch of those uh, uh, red tiger modus uh, that was actually the first batch I got uh, wasn't very big the second batch you'll see in a, in a second is actually uh, has outgrown outpaced uh, these guys only like two weeks older or uh, younger the other batch but uh, they have a 40 gallon so that's why they're outgrowing these guys I'll eventually probably combine these um, in the middle you'll see these are the panamensis um, you know definitely in that three quarters of an inch to an inch range uh, they're looking good big eaters uh, let me know if you're interested in some panamensis really fun species we'll go take a look at the 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 group the the parents here in a second and uh, on the right there's another batch of uh, Islanus um, I do have Islanus available and they're growing fast they're like an inch I would say now uh, give or take so but these are gonna be after them um, all right now this is the 40 gallon that I have those Carpentis, the blue Texas growing out and kind of interesting what I did here I had two Trimax that and you could really start to see their blues on on these guys uh, just before I talk about the Trimax just uh, absolutely amazing I actually pulled these fry out like two months ago I think uh, from the main group um, when I was really starting to struggle getting spawns and I thought hey I need a backup uh, plan here uh, to continue with the breeding and uh, they have grown incredibly fast you know of course I feed them more there's only I think 13 of them in this 40 gallon tank and uh, they're just they're amazing fish uh, I highly recommend uh, you know this species things will happen quick you'll get some co coloring up will happen really fast really young um, and you can see that the biggest one right there probably in the three inch range already um, so I'll have to eventually do something dedicate a bigger tank to, to develop that pair uh, if I want to continue to keep this group together 40 gallons not gonna work but to the Trimax I actually had two big Trimax in that in my batch of Trimax that are available the Rio Naranjos and I took them out and I threw them in here they were much smaller than the Carpentis but they've really kind of caught up and and uh, through you know they're being more aggressive than the Carpentis even though they're a smaller size they've eaten really really well and you could see that one right there just uh, just a big beefy guy uh, I think it's gonna be a male we'll see uh, and uh, and the other Trimac over there I'm eventually probably not gonna keep these two 
um, might actually happen soon, uh, depending on the aggression. If they're too aggressive for the Carpentas, which they will be, I think, uh, I will be moving these um, soon. Uh, we'll, we're just gonna just gonna keep watching that. But two Trimex in here, probably males, I would guess, but still at a small size, they're uh, maybe two inches. I like to watch this guy. This guy's just super aggressive down here at the bottom. So, got a few Trimex in there, but the main goal here is obviously the Carpentis. And uh, I wanna see a pair forming here. Uh, probably won't happen for uh, until maybe the four inch range at the youngest or the smallest. But hopefully that big one's a male, we'll see. Otherwise, if it's a female, we're gonna have, uh, it's gonna just take much longer. So anyways, Carpentis are doing good. Uh, the grow out carpentus and down below uh, you're not going to see much of the fish but I have uh, the ones that are available um, definitely three quarters of an inch and I, and I always always do my best to get the biggest ones out of here uh, just a really aggressive at fry stage for this species um, and I need to move the biggest ones first so uh, let me know if you're interested blue texas you could see the stages I showed, showed the adults then I showed some grouts and the two to three inch range and already have a ton of color. These guys, if you get some of these, it'll be very quick, I think. Uh, if you do it right, you know, if you get a nice little group, uh, eight, eight fish or more, uh, I usually don't like to start with less than that. You know, people start with four, then they soon end up with three and then two and then one, you know, they just pick each other off with a small group. Not smart, in my opinion. Um, you start with a good size group, it works good. As you can tell, uh, I started with 13 in here and I haven't lost a single one. You don't see much aggression. The only aggression is my fault because I added two Trimax. Uh, that's the worst of the aggression in here. So I think you could follow this strategy, get a group, eight to 15 of them would be my goal. Um, and uh, you'll soon have this likely uh maybe even bigger size if you give them a 75 gallon or a nicer size tank so this is only a 40 breeder anyways something to consider you're looking to try a beautiful species and uh, you can tame their aggression by doing this all right let's move on guys pass by the cubans one more time all right next we got a 120 gallon and these guys are going to be very skittish uh, these are the multifasciatus grow-outs. Uh, they are growing, um, somewhat of a slower pace. What's going on? Uh, and I am, uh, yeah, it's definitely testing my patience growing these guys out. When it comes to feeding time and the garage isn't open, they're, uh, they're just like pigs begging for food. But um, the rest of the time, yeah, it's more on the skittish side. So hopefully that'll turn around. But not not coloring up yet you know uh definitely moving slow and uh we'll see hopefully uh my patient can hold off and 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 with the other projects i have uh it's really going to see uh if i continue to do this obviously i mentioned i have those depii those depi and uh i think they would do great in this 120 gallon i can get some good uh you know, observing them pretty well. And I think they would start coloring up much sooner. So that thought is on my mind. I might move these guys to a bottom tank and let them do their little grow out thing, slow grow out thing down there instead of wasting a top 120 gallon where I could show some fish off. So we'll see, considering that idea. Anyways, besides that, they're doing fine. None of them getting picked off. Uh, down below, 60 gallon, got the uh, Trimax. And uh, these are definitely in that three quarters of an inch to an inch size. They're available. Rio Naranjo Trimax off of that old pair, that big pair that I used to have. Let me know if you're interested. All right, and uh, they're doing good in here. Now to the last stretch. So let me get my screechy chair. Here's, uh, here's what a lot of the big change has happened. So 
if you recall, I used to have those Feste, F1 Feste grouts, um, what I thought were three males from a different bloodline, and then I pulled three females from my, uh, you know, that batch that you saw in the 120, try to get an unrelated pair. Um, I had them in a 120 for a while. It, you know, they weren't progressing as fast as I wanted. So I moved them to this 180 and uh, give them a little more space. You know, those three males, what we thought were males, uh, the biggest ones, you know, they just weren't developing fast and they're in that six inch, maybe six to seven inch range. And, uh, you know, just, just really, really taking their time. And then in that 120, you, I started to see that one, one fish that started to develop female traits. The cheeks started to color up red. A uh, little black in the dorsal started to form. Uh, it was clear that one of those was changing. And uh, happened at such a late size. It was, uh, you know, I've seen that happen before in the past, but it's not very common. A lot of times you can see that three to five inches, but at six inches is kind of odd. And, uh, and then I had the biggest one out of this batch, the biggest, which I was almost sure was male. We're gonna try to get in here. Um, try to find that fish. I think it's back here, right there in the back. Sure enough, it started to do the exact same thing. Let me know what you think, but I am almost positive that's a female at this point. Um, and what's really tricky is look at all the spangles on the fins and the body. They usually the females don't have those spangles. That fish is that six and a half to seven inch range right there and just started to show that black on the dorsal and, and the coloration of the face. Uh, really throwing me off. And uh, you know, so that, that I guess possibly would explain the reason why we haven't seen some development and pairing, pairing activity in, these, uh, in this grow out tank. Um, and uh, the, well, the biggest one, the dominant one was a female. So no wonder she didn't pair off with another female. Now, uh, there is still hope that this last one out of the three is still gonna stay a male. I mean, those other two fish look identical to this fish right now. And I would guess this is a male, but you never know. And uh, you can see a little bit of, uh, you know, beating that this fish is taking from that bigger, which looks like a female. So obviously my biggest dominant fish in here being a female, I was like, man, I got to change this up. So I threw in that big wild caught male. Um, this one's for sure a male, has spawned successfully with wild cup females in the past to hopefully make everything clear in here and uh, see if some of those females might take a liking to them and uh, see what happens. I've, I, I added this guy maybe uh, a few days ago and so not much has changed. He's much bigger than the rest, but I definitely could still see uh, a, a pair forming. And so I did that, and you can see one of the smallest right there. Uh, there's a lot of places for them to, to get around and hide, but I'm still obviously gonna have to watch the aggression. I'm, I'm gonna try this for a little bit. If, uh, if nothing happens here, I might make a decision on this male. This male is probably 12 inches, I would guess. At least 11 to 12 inches, wild caught and uh, proven breeder. But since I'm worried, I'm working on all these F1s, I'm, I'm going to have to make a choice. I just can't have half of my tanks be feste. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of females in here. I'm, I'm, I'm really just hoping I can get a male, an F1 male, to outsize that big female that turned female lately or showed herself lately. So we'll see. Hopefully she pairs with that wild caught male. Although it doesn't look like uh, he wants anything to do with any of them. But I might move this guy. We'll see. Um, down below. 
got 240 breeders. On the right, these are the Islanis, and they are available. You can see them growing really fast. Um, and I know people have got some of these out of the same batch and focused on them, and they're just growing like weeds. Um, really fun. There's just some in here that are bigger than an inch, and they're, you know, I always try to get those ones first. But, anyways, I'm listing them as an inch. Let me know if you're interested. Red Islanums, guys. Um, and then to the left, these are the Red Tiger Moda Fry. They're just getting, they're getting to that, it, that's comfortable size. Uh, a, a lot of them where I could, you know, list them at three quarters of an inch. So uh, for that reason, uh, I'm going to start moving them. Let me know if you're interested. They are uh, F2s, Rio Motogua. They are now available. And uh, excited about these guys. Let me know. All right. And the last rack I have here, uh, top tank, 75 gallon. These are the, uh, this is kind of the group, the colony, where we have the macula pinus right there, the dominant male, biggest male. Absolutely amazing species, really fun. And then we have the more dominant species, the panamensis. See the uh, dominant male right there. And uh, absolutely beautiful species. That subtle beauty is just uh, really nice to look at. And you can see the female back here. I think the female is uh, in that pot with the male and I think there is a potential, yeah, her tube's down. I haven't looked at her closely, but uh, I would imagine there's, there's another batch of eggs down in that pot. She likes to spawn on the ceiling in the walls and I can't see them from here, but uh, I would guess they're in there or they'll be there very shortly. Um, they're doing really good. This uh, group thing is really working well for me. Um, you'll see some aggression now, but there's enough fish in here that, uh, you know, it's just a short period. I'll usually pull the fry um, regardless if I'm going to keep them because I try to tone down the aggression, you know. Um, and as you guys know, the macula pinnis have even... Uh, try to put down a spawn of their own. You can see the female in the back there. Uh, they only had that one, it was unsuccessful, but I'm hoping that they're gonna give it another shot. But that would really really be nice to get a batch off this pair. Well, kinda call them a pair. But you can see the male uh, kinda tolerates her, kinda likes her, uh, was in the pot with her last time. So. Pretty species, both of these species. And I could just watch these guys for for a while. Anyways, uh, the rest of the tank is doing good. We got another four or five uh, male Mecula pinnis. Got another two male Panamensis, which uh, they kind of. They kind of flare up at, at each other uh, before the female is ready to breed, but she always picks that one male. That one male always wins. Um, so doing good. And, and, and then the little dithers, the uh, Buenos Aires Tetras have uh, done well in here. They're not getting picked off like they did with my uh, Stalsberg eye. So fun tank. Really working well right now, knock on wood. Hope it doesn't change. Anyways, uh, and then of course, uh, I do have a tiniest batch of Panamensis fry up here. Um, kind of funny, I pulled this, this, there's actually two batches technically that are in here. Um, I pulled like the smallest batch, about seven fry, about a month ago. Then they had another batch and uh, it was actually bigger, uh, maybe 40 to 50 fry. I threw those fry in here because I just wanted to remove them. I wasn't sure uh, if any of them were gonna make it with these bigger fry, and I don't think any of them did, or, or, or very few did. Um, but anyways, uh, now there's maybe 
10, 8 to 10. We'll see. If I get a really big batch, I'm just going to scrap these and, and go with this, the, the next batch, but we'll see. Oh, and uh, something I didn't show on the Feste Grot tank. Uh, this is the next batch of Cubans um, that I have in here. So uh, after that, you know, 100 gallon that I showed you, these are what's going to be grown out. Anyways, back to this rack. Uh, down below the 75 gallon have the, uh, the True Green Terrors that are available. Very skittish, uh, like the other grow outs, but uh, definitely calling them that inch plus or minus uh, range. Um, they are available, guys. These are F1s, and this is the last batch that I have because I'm not getting any breeding with my adults. So message me if you're interested. Um, who knows if I'll get more after this. So anyways, uh, that about wraps it up in the fish room. Um, maybe I'll mention the ponds are doing great. Um, the Brazilians are really coming out. It's getting a little warmer. Uh, they're very active uh, in the 300 gallon pond in the backyard. It's hard for me to get any kind of good video. Uh, I guess I could just do a bird's eye view kind of thing and uh, just just show a video update like that. But uh, yeah, they they come hit the water really, really hard when it comes time to feeding sometimes. And uh, and it's fun to, fun to do. Also, the, uh, the Gymno Geophagus that I have in the 100 gallon, they're doing okay. Uh, I don't see them a lot. They're always hiding, but uh, they're definitely not none of them are dying off but and uh the brazilians is fry that i have left in the other 100 gallon they're available as well so message me if you're interested in any of the species i've mentioned here um and uh please feel free to comment any questions uh like the video if you liked it, it really helps me out and subscribe to the channel if you're not already and uh i appreciate it guys that wraps it up and until the next one Bye now.